In this quick tip video, I'm going to talk about anti-backlash plates. These plates are riveted to the front of counter gears in typical Muncie applications, Saginaw applications, and some of the Chrysler A833 transmissions. So I'm going to tell you what these plates are about, what they're used for, why maybe you should keep them on, why you should take them off. Check it out. Second Design Factory Muncie M20 counter gears have this anti-backlash plate on them. It's got three rivets, one, two, three. And if you notice that these rivets have scrape marks in them, that's because they've been getting loose and running into the front of the case. When I build these transmissions, I always take this plate off. A lot of people ask me, what does this plate do? If you notice the plate, the teeth of the plate are offset relative to the teeth of the gear. They kind of cock slightly forward of the gear. There's a coil spring inside. You can see that the spring is fastened here. It wraps around in the inside. And what the plate does, if I could do this without messing my fingers up, you can see the movement of the plate. Under a load, the plate compresses. While the plate is not under a load, it keeps the backlash tight against the gear. So there is no space and no movement between the headset. And what that does is it maintains zero backlash so the gear can't rattle. For some reason, the engineers had felt that that particular gear was going to rattle in a neutral or unloaded state. So if you have some sort of weird harmonics, and maybe they had some issues back then with engines, they will cause the input shaft to rattle against the counter gear, and you will get this kind of groaning, rattling noise in neutral. Once you raise up the RPM of the transmission, and the gear stay loaded, the rattle goes away. So these anti-backlash or rattle plates are used for that purpose. They were used in the Muncie M20s, some of the Saginaw 4 speeds, and actually some Chrysler AA33 transmissions that were used in trucks. From what I can remember on the Chrysler units, these backlash plates were very important because they were used in diesel applications. And the diesels produced a lot of low RPM harmonics. And that plate, if it was defective or the springs wore out, the transmission would groan. Rebuilder would come in thinking there was something wrong with the transmission bearings when in fact it was the springs in the plate were shot. So that's what these plates do. So you can see these rivets have been scraping against the inside of the case. When you see this, obviously the rivets are starting to walk forward and you need to remove the plate completely. If you don't, eventually you'll have a failure. And the plate will come off, get stuck in between the gear and cause a mess. The way I remove these rivets is I grind the back side of them flush with the gear. And then I'll pry them out. If the rivet doesn't want to come out this way, you may have to just grind the tab a little bit more. You can see it's starting to come out now. Okay? A lot of times I simply pry out the old rivet. Like that. So once the plate is removed, you can see you have the three holes where the rivets were. Now a lot of older replacement counter gears actually had these holes in them and this machine area for the plate to register. But the new counter gears, we don't use these plates anymore. So without the spring in place, you can see that the hole is much bigger than the rivet. So the, the, the plate floats within the rivet like this. And that is why eventually the plate actually cuts into the rivet and shears the rivet. The spring keeps the plate loaded, in other words, away from the teeth, like this. You can see, I'm going to exaggerate it, but you can see how the gear teeth are over here and the plate is here, so it's about like this. So, when there's no load on it, the plate keeps the backlash down to zero because it takes up the space in between the teeth. As the transmission loads up and you increase speed, the plate moves to a point where now you have the plate not engaging the gear and the gear's teeth are riding on 
tooth to tooth. So primarily the plate is used when there's no load on the gears and it's just kind of floating in neutral. And again, it's to prevent the gear train from rattling because they felt that for some reason this particular combination had excessive backlash and they needed something to reduce that but not make the gears fit tighter maybe for gear noise issues. The problem is, is that when this gear plate is going back and forth like this, eventually it work hardens the rivets, the rivets break, the plate comes off, and you have a problem. New gears don't have these holes in them anyway and they're not counterboard, but the older gears used to have holes in them and you were able to buy a plate kit with new rivets from GM and rivet it in place. Again, that was old school. We found that these are not being used anymore. It works fine without it. We've never had any rattling issues with the plate removed. And if we look at the heads of the rivet, you can actually see where it was already scraping into the case. And that's not good. And so it was already coming apart. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Here's your anti-rattle plate. Notice the rivets are no longer in the holes, but yet they're still on the gear. So you can see one, two, and three that the rivets were sheared off. Typically this is what happens. And of course this plate, you can see is all broken up, got stuck in between the gear, created a nice amount of damage here. Kind of like the damage. You don't get to see this. You can see the way the headset broke. Again, it's quite common when the rattle plate lets go. But also because the gears, the broken teeth had no place to go, the case just literally grenaded and split right in half. I guess the first thing I should do is explain what backlash is. Backlash is simply the clearance between two gears that are running together. Over here I have an input shaft, bottom is a counter gear right over here. And if you look at the two teeth as they go together like this, watch this movement back and forth. See that? That's your backlash. That's your clearance between the teeth. Now when the box is filled with oil, oil acts as a cushion between the teeth and you don't get rattled sometimes. But the bottom line is that plate was designed to keep a preload constantly on these two gears, preventing this noise from happening. Now you might ask, why does it happen in the first place? It happens because the input shaft is driven through a sprung hub on a clutch. The clutch disc has a spring on it, and the spring can oscillate back and forth depending on engine harmonics. In other words, if you've got some severe engine harmonics going on, some vibrations, this input will rattle around. And it's an undesirable noise in some applications, and therefore they felt that they should put that plate on there. But for the most part, again, I removed them because they create a mess if, if it lets go. So I hope you like this quick tips video on anti-backlash plates. It's a common question often asked of me. Sometimes almost once a week I get a question on these plates. If you like this video or have any comments, please leave them below. Give me a thumbs up on it. And please, please, please subscribe. It would be very appreciated. Thanks for watching.